are inundated every day with requests from charities and most of them seem really worthwhile. But how do we choose which ones to support and how do you know when something's a scam? We have experts with us this hour to advise us on choosing a charity and that advice begins right now on It's Your Call. Choosing a charity, it seems like it should be relatively easy, yet for many people, it's a difficult decision to make. We want to help those in need, but when there are so many, how do we choose? Well, today we hope to make it a bit easier for you. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Lynn Doyle. Now, if you're like me, you probably get phone calls, mailings, even email requests to help certain charities. Maybe you've helped someone in the past, and now you find yourself on countless lists asking for money. Or maybe you're at a stage in life where you have to be or you want to be discriminating in making your donations. Well, this hour on It's Your Call, we're going to help you choose a charity with guidelines from experts in the field. And we're giving you, our viewers, a chance to tell us about the charities you support as well. Now, just a note of caution, just because the charities appear on this program in no way suggest a recommendation from It's Your Call. So with that said, let me introduce our first guest. Ken Berger is president and CEO of Charity Navigator, an independent charity evaluator which helps charitable givers make intelligent giving decisions by providing information on over 5,000 charities. It also evaluates the financial health of each of those charities. Ken, it's great to have you with us. Great to be here. Thanks. 5,000 mm. charities. I was amazed that there were that many in the United States. There are 2 million. Um, and uh, actually, the 5,000 that we evaluate are some of the largest. They get about 50% of all the money that goes into the sector each year. And about 20,000 of those 2 million charities get about 85% of all the money that comes in, which is about $2 trillion a year. That's unbelievable. So even given the economic climate of the last couple of years, Americans are still being very ge generous with their donations? In fact, the most generous people in the world. We give two to three times more than any other country. No one comes close. We have the largest and most unique uh, nonprofit sector in history, uh, and it goes all the way back to our founding. Even Alec de Tocqueville was talking about it at the beginning. How about that? So, what do you look for when you are evaluating a charity, and then consequently, what should we as givers be looking for? Well, we look at two basic components. One, we look at the financial uh, characteristics of the charity, a number of measures. And then the second dimension that we look at is what we call accountability and transparency. Things like how strong is your board of directors, how much governance do they do uh, and oversight, and also how open is the charity with information to donors and others. And do people take advantage of the information that you provide so that they can then make an educated decision? We, at this point, we have over 3 million unique visitors each year, so it's, it's been a record-breaking year for us. So more than ever, people are using our service, and we're thrilled to be able to provide it for free to everyone. All right. Well, we certainly appreciate you being here. Now, if you have questions or comments about choosing a charity, or you have concerns about how and where your money is being spent, we're going to invite you to join in now. First, do you regularly give to charity? And if so, how do you make your decisions? And what are your biggest concerns about donating? If you have questions, comments, suggestions, thoughts, go ahead and email me right now. Or if you'd like to tell us about your charity, we invite you to do that as well. As always, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And we always say, while you're on Facebook, please like us there. <laughs> We've gotten a great response so far to our request for viewer input. So let's go to the telephone lines now and hear from some of our viewers. Our first caller is Beverly, who is the executive director of a group called Mommy's Light. Beverly, good to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Lynn. What is Mommy's Light all about? Mommy's Light is a, tra a tradition fulfillment specialist um, organization. What we do for um, maternally bereaved children, mm -hmm. we fulfill a tradition that they'd like to continue doing that they used to do with their mom. We do it once a year, every year, until the children are 18. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. And do you get a lot of, of children who find themselves in this situation where they've lost their mother or their mother is, is very ill? Um, we do. We, we are continuing to get, um, you know, needy children for our services, which is, is great. And, you know, our services provide a healthy connection for them, you know, to be able to maintain a healthy connection to their mom, which is a really important part of bereavement. Oh, well, we certainly wish you continued success with that. And if people want to uh, support Mommy's Lay, we've got the information there up on the screen. Thank you so much, Beverly. 
Thank you for having us, Lynn. Sure thing. Now, our next caller, I understand, is from Chicago. Karen, good to have you with us. What organization do you represent? Hi, my name is Karen Carlson, and I'm the Executive Director for the Foundation for Women's Cancer. Oh, and what is this, the mission of, of that particular foundation? Well, our foundation was actually just celebrated our 20-year anniversary last year, and our purpose and mission is to raise public awareness, promote research and education and training, and we really uh, support that mission through our programs. Now, it's interesting because there are so many different um, cancer-related nonprofits out there. How do you separate yourself? What makes yours different from perhaps some of the others? Well, we focus on the gynecologic cancers. Um, so in, in simple terms, it's the cancers below the waist uh, for women's cancer, and they're cancers unique to women. So that's it's cervical, ovarian, and endometrial cancer are the primary cancers that we focus on. Okay. Well, again, we put the information up there for you, Karen, so we appreciate you calling in and sharing a bit of information about your organization. Okay, and if I may, we just want to uh, tell people that we have the National Race to End Women's Cancer. Uh, it, we've held it twice so far. It was a huge success last year, and it's a very big movement that's happening in Washington, D.C. again on November 4th okay. this year, and we're really excited and hope people will join us. Well, go to your website and get more information. Karen, thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to take some more of your calls in just a moment, but next I want to introduce our next guest, Phil McCarty, who is the president of Good Scout. It's a social good consultancy that works with nonprofits and corporate brands to help maximize their fundraising and giving efforts. Phil, it's good to have you with us. Thanks. Glad to be here. So um, social good consultancy, what exactly does that is that comprised of? So we work very closely with nonprofits as well as with brands on how to look at their philanthropic giving, um, specifically looking at corporate alliance development, which many people deem cause marketing. Uh, you may be familiar with it when you go into a retail store and you're asked to make a donation uh, at the register or a product sales percentage. Um, we really focus on those particular areas and efforts with our nonprofit clients as well as with our brands. So are you actually working with large corporations when they adopt a charity? as opposed to you know the smaller uh, independent organizations? We actually work with both. So we work with the nonprofit and help them with the corporate relationships, and then we have some corporate clients that we work with and help them determine what cause they should support. I have to ask, though, I mean, why do we need so many? I'm shocked at the number that Ken told us. Why, why is there such a need? Why can't they consolidate and work all together? Why do we need to have so many individual charities? I think you bring up a great point. I think that uh, coalition building and really looking at opportunities to uh, to bring missions together is going to be something critical to the uh, to the future of nonprofits and to charities as they're moving forward. There's virtually no real restriction on people creating charities. It's a very relatively simple process, <clears throat> and I think a lot of people want to have control. Uh, it's that entrepreneurial spirit of our country, and the diversity and creativity. And so uh, I think we're always going to have a tremendous number, and we're always going to have this, unless there's some change in regulation. The other side of the coin, I want to remind you, though, there is a tremendous concentration of resources. So 94% of charities get only about 6% of the money, very little. It's most charities, almost half, are 25000 or less per year. They're really, really small. Local efforts, volunteers, they don't even have a paid staff. And that, again, it goes back 200 years or more. You know. About that. So we have to take a short break. But when we come back, we're going to give you an opportunity to tell us about your favorite charity. And we're going to ask those common questions that people have. How do you know your money is going where you want it to go? If you want to join in, email me at lynn at lynndoyle.net. We'll be right back.